Uh, welcome to the first of hopefully many monthly webinars focusing on outdoor uh, water use and conservation. Um, today we have uh, Katie Masucci with us from the city of Plano, Texas, and she is going to walk through her um, online learning module and kind of tell us uh, how that's been a great uh, outreach and education tool for her in the city of, city of Plano. So I'll turn it over to Katie. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Can I think that everybody can hear me okay, um, but I guess just let Mark know if there's any issue. I'm going to be sharing my screen here in a moment to uh, share a really cool resource with you all that you, I hope that you'll enjoy. Uh, so as Candace mentioned, I do work for the City of Plano. I am the Water Education Coordinator for the City of Plano, so it is uh, my role to develop and oversee all of our education and outreach programs as they relate to water for our city. I work on a team of 10 individuals and each of us has a different specialty. So while I'm water, we have recycling, litter, gardening, composting, energy, and so on. So it is a really neat team sustainability wise uh, to work on. So without further ado, I will go ahead and share my screen and start with my PowerPoint presentation to give you a little bit of background information on this resource. And then I'll actually demonstrate it for you. So here goes the screen sharing. Oh, yes, I do have a poll before we get started. Yeah, I just I've, to... I've launched that now. I was going to say, and folks, feel free to vote. And uh, go, go ahead, uh, Katie, as soon as they're done, I, I, I'll share the results. Okay, great. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, just a very simple question. Uh, hopefully, your answers will um, play into my presentation in just a moment. So let me go ahead with this screen share. Okay. Okay, Katie, so I'm going to go ahead and share the results. Uh, let me know if you can see those. Yes, I can. Thank you. And that's that's exactly what I hoped and thought you all would say. So uh, the resource that I'm going to talk about today is an interactive online uh, learning module. And so we hope that our residents feel the same way that you do and that they will want to go online and learn about irrigation at their convenience rather than waiting for us to answer their questions. So uh, you'll see towards the end that our metrics show uh, indeed the same thing that residents do like to use our module. And while we offer other resources, including in-person classes, uh, this is a great way for them to get on-demand information from their city that's tailored to them as residents. So here we go with my PowerPoint. Oh, maybe it's asking for a password again. Oh, here we go. All right, so the city of Plano has over 84,000 utility accounts. So we are quite a large city with just under 280,000 residents living here today. We are uh, the ninth largest city in the state of Texas at over 72 square miles. And the median age for a resident in Plano is just under 38 years old. So just approaching middle age, as you'll see in a moment, we do have a lot of families in our city. And just for some reference, we are a suburb that's located uh, about 30 minutes north of the Dallas area. As I mentioned, we are a very family-oriented suburban uh, city. That being said, we do have quite a bit of development in the commercial sector. In fact, although we're about 95% built out today, the majority of development that is happening is in the commercial sector. But if you were to drive around Plano, majority of what you would see would be neighborhoods like this. Uh, we are a very uh, park and recreation uh, centric city. This is one of our nature preserves on, uh, in our town. And as I mentioned, commercial is the growing area of our city. Um, this is one of the new developments called Granite Park out on the west side of the city. Uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, companies like Toyota coming to build their uh, national and sometimes international headquarters uh, in the city of Plano. Dallas-Fort Worth in general is a very uh, desirable area at this time. It's booming. Uh, there's a lot of uh, housing development uh, to our north especially. So folks want to come here. 
But you can see that uh, the city of Plano, maybe not necessarily the city surrounding us, but Plano in particular, as I mentioned, is about completely built out. And most of our growth occurred in the 80s and 90s, which is when I was growing up in Plano. So uh, born in 89, lived in the same house my whole uh, childhood, and saw a tremendous amount of growth in this city. It's pretty astounding to, uh, have, to have seen. And as I also mentioned, we're primarily residential while commercial is still growing. It's uh, not the majority of our water use in the city. So 60% of our total water use is from the residential sector with just marginal uh, water use from the public, industrial, and wholesale areas. But let's take a closer look at our uh, water use on a person and city uh, level. So, a uh, winter average, say a day like today, a non-watering day, uh, the typical person would use 151 gallons per capita per day, and the city would use about 42 million gallons. The summer maximum, so we're going from an average to uh, the maximum that we saw in 2016, that skyrockets to 421 uh, gallons per person per day and for our city, 117 million gallons per day. And remember, keep in mind that the winter average is a non-watering day, the summer max is a watering day. So you can really see the difference in our water use from day to day and season to season. But as you know, we're primarily residential and watering days make a big difference in how much water we use. But still, we have residents calling constantly to say, there's no way my water bill can be this high. There's no way my sprinklers are possibly using this much water. So we've developed an infographic to help walk them through their sprinklers use. And keeping in mind that this is an average Plano sprinkler system running for an average amount of time with six irrigated zones. So let's say we have a traditional spray head and uh, we're running it for uh, one minute, that's three gallons of water in that one minute. So we're going to build from there. So if we run one zone, so that's six identical spray heads for 10 minutes, we have 180 gallons of water used. So if we have six identical zones just like that for 10 minutes, we're using over a thousand gallons. And then we take it to the next level, we look at an entire billing cycle. If we were to do that three times a day, which in theory is allowed, uh, that would be 3,200 gallons in a day on a watering day. We do that twice a week. Again, this is allowed, 6,500 gallons. And then we look at four weeks, our full billing cycle, and we're almost to 26,000 gallons of water just from our sprinkler system in an average Plano yard alone. So walking residents through this information when they call to, to say what is going on uh, really helps calm them down and say, okay, I, I do believe you now, but then they have a lot of other questions and those might be, how does my sprinkler system work? How do I know if I have a problem? How long should I run each zone? And what in the world is this cycle and soak method and how do I do it? So although they may now know how much water their sprinkler system is using, that doesn't necessarily help them to solve problems or to understand how to be a good steward or owner of an irrigation system. So in classes and other uh, events, I like to, to share with people that you wouldn't see this or do this, of course, but unfortunately, something like this or this could be a typical Tuesday in the city of Plano. Watering while it's raining or watering with excessive runoff. These are very common problems and problems that we want to curb with uh, the use of our resources. So we do have some challenges and you've seen this picture when I was talking about our very family suburban centered uh, city. We are a very turf heavy city. And we don't necessarily discourage turf. We want the right kind, so warm season grasses are okay. But we also want right plant in the right place, which is something that people struggle with and we have other resources to help them with. But in addition to being a turf heavy city, we have uh, systems that were put in very quickly. They were poorly designed and installed. 
Uh, lack of hydrozoning is a big problem in our city. So a lot of folks have systems that are watering both trees and turf or flower beds and turf at the same time. And as you know, those plants have very different watering needs and requirements. So this can be problematic. Uh, aging systems, since many of our systems were put in in the 80s and 90s, some even in the 70s, they're getting old and they're not functioning properly. And also the set it and forget it mentality. We have folks that keep their irrigation system running twice a week all year round regardless of weather conditions. And as you may have seen uh, just this past week, we had some very cold weather and we had quite a few public safety issues by having those sprinkler systems running when they shouldn't have been in freezing temperatures. But if we turn this around, you'll see that we also have some opportunities here in our city. So I, I'm a very glass half full person. I like to be optimistic. So uh, we do have a very tech savvy population, especially considering the uh, high tech companies, data driven companies that are coming to Plano and to North Texas. We have a very busy population. And we also have a DIY mindset. Folks like to do things on their own. Many homeowners and many of them uh, want to save money and learn by uh, taking care of those home challenges on their own. So enter the module. Uh, this is the resource that I want to discuss with you today. I hope you found a bit of that background information to be helpful uh, with some context. But this is our online learning module called Water, Water Everywhere, a guide to sprinkler repair. It's an interactive online resource that's accessible by anyone, anywhere, anytime. And this anyone, anywhere, anytime theme is very valuable. Uh, you'll see a little bit later some metrics on use compared to our class attendance. And uh, because people can access this anywhere, anytime, however they like at their convenience, uh, that really drives uh, the module use. It allows users to work in progression or review sections in the order of their choice. So there is a progression to this module, but if you've already been through it, you know the progression and you just want to get back to one part for your reference, you can do that. You can start anywhere you'd like, you can toggle to anywhere you'd like, so it is a very easily navigable uh, resource. And not only is it teaching you, but it's offering you the opportunity to practice what you learn, which, as you all know, it's one thing to learn a, a theme, but it's another to actually put it into practice and apply it, especially when it comes to uh, equipment that you're relatively new to. So there are five key learning objectives in the development of the module. And the first, and probably most importantly, is for homeowners to be able to identify the main parts of their irrigation system. Do I have spray heads, rotor heads? What is drip irrigation? What is an irrigation controller, a rain-free sensor? And perhaps most importantly, what is a backflow device? When residents and users know what these items are, they have a much easier time communicating with them, uh, with people who can help them through those issues. And from there on out, we want them to identify common problems and be empowered to learn how to complete simple repairs. And I'll show you an example of a simple repair. On the flip side, we also want users to know when to seek help. So there are some repairs that your average homeowner probably shouldn't undertake. They may need to enlist help from a licensed professional. And finally, we want to teach them a bit about scheduling. We want them to learn the cycle and soak method, which can save a tremendous amount of water and money. And we want to, them to apply that through practice before they actually put it into their irrigation controller. So it was a process, and I have to say that this process occurred before uh, my time in my role, a couple of years. So uh, in 2014, there was a directive from uh, our manager to de develop a fifth online learning module. As I'll show you in a little bit, we actually had several others that were already in existence and uh, available for residents' use. We needed a fifth one because they were doing very well. At the same time, we were actually in a severe drought. And because of these drought conditions, residents were calling left and right, calling us, calling utilities, and asking all sorts of questions about their irrigation system and scheduling and why can I only run my sprinklers uh, once every other week? Uh, so these conditions encourage folks to save money and do so through their irrigation system. 
but they didn't know how, and we didn't have a quick uh, and easy way to direct them. So we partnered with MLINK, with it, which is a local organization, uh, to develop this fifth module. They are the company that actually worked with us to develop the other modules that we already had in existence as well. And after one year and $15,000 investment, our irrigation module went live in January of 2015. So the first major area of our irrigation module is the spot the problem. And so this is what's teaching residents to just observe their sprinkler system while it's running and look for things like a clogged nozzle or filter, uh, a sprinkler head that's broken, uh, missing, uh, obviously has a problem here as you can see in this picture, or maybe even a misaligned spray pattern. I can't tell you how many times I drove by fences like these growing up and, and wonder why uh, folks would let their sprinklers water their fence. It's not growing. And then some more advanced repairs where we encourage folks to contact a licensed professional for help. These might include something like excessively high water pressure leading to uh, misting, low water pressure in which the sprinkler heads fail to pop up or only pop up partially, a, a broken pipe, and maybe a faulty valve. Really anywhere where electricity is confirmed, we don't advise our residents to, to tackle that problem unless uh, they're comfortable doing so, but to call a licensed professional. And then the cycle and soak method. So this is a method of scheduling that allows water to soak into our very dense clay soil um, at a slow rate. And so rather than running our sprinklers for a long time and seeing a lot of runoff, we advise residents to cut their, cy their cycles into smaller chunks, allowing for time in between cycles for that water to be absorbed by the clay soil. And this little infographic just shows an overview of what that means. So I think what I'll do now is break for questions, and then I'm going to go into the actual module itself and give you a look around. So are there any questions? Uh, Katie, we don't have any questions yet, but maybe once you get going in the module, there'll be some that pop up. All right, let me get out of my PowerPoint here. Okay. All right, so this is the web page, and excuse me, this is the first week that our uh, new website has gone live. The city has just done a major overhaul, so I'm still getting uh, familiar with our new setup here, but plano.gov slash modules is where you can find all of our modules. We actually have a brand new one that I'll mention in a little while, but here's Water Water Everywhere. Welcome to Water Water Everywhere, a guide to sprinkler repair. This course teaches you how to identify and fix common issues with your sprinkler system and how to achieve a healthier lawn using cycle and soak watering. To navigate this course, use the forward, back, pause, and replay buttons. Click the menu button to see the full course outline. The resources and glossary section contains additional information that you can access at any time during this course. Click the audio button to turn the sound on or off. Please be aware, this course is meant to provide you with an overall guide for sprinkler repair. To find comprehensive answers to problems with your system, you may need to refer to manufacturers' websites for specific instructions. Okay, so as you can see, there is a progression uh, that will lead you through the module, especially if it's your first time to do it. But at any point, you can open up this little menu tab here. And I would like to start with uh, spot the problem and walk you through an example of that. So here we go with spot the problem. This sprinkler system has a few problems, which mean high water bills and wasted water. You can save money and reduce water waste at this house by making a few easy repairs. Click each image to identify the problem and learn how to fix it. Okay, we'll start with a clogged nozzle or filter. Click each section to learn more. A clogged nozzle or filter is a common problem for spray heads, but does not occur in rotors. 
If a spray head has popped up but has little to no water flow or an interrupted spray pattern, the nozzle or filter is likely clogged. To fix this problem, you will need these supplies. So once you've assembled your supplies, you can watch a video on how Click to play fix. to see how to fix this problem. Occasionally, you may get a clogged nozzle. To fix this, lift the stem of the spray head and unscrew the nozzle. Take out and thoroughly rinse the screen and spray nozzle. Flush the zone by turning on the system very briefly. Reinstall the screen and spray nozzle. If the problem persists, replace with a new screen and spray nozzle. So just short clips to give you a, an overview. Uh, from there, you could go back to spot the problem, but you know, let's say that that was our problem and now we're satisfied. But you know, maybe we have sensed a, a bigger problem in our system, so we're going to go to the Advanced Repairs tab. You may encounter an issue that needs more than a quick fix. For these advanced repairs, consider contacting a licensed irrigator. Click the icons to learn how to identify advanced repairs. If your yard contains brown spots while the rest of the yard is green, you have distribution uniformity issues. This means water isn't getting to those spots, and a licensed irrigator can help you figure out the best solution. Your system should come with a rain and freeze sensor. If your system turns on when it's raining, or in the same day as rainfall, or if it turns on when the temperature is at or below freezing, you may have a faulty sensor. And we'll look at one more, just for fun. When no water comes out when you turn on a zone, or if the zone keeps running after you turn it off, you may have a faulty valve. All right. But let's move on to scheduling. I think the scheduling, the cycle and soak section of the module is actually the most interactive and provides you with some excellent background information on how to apply this system to your controller. So first we want to know what is the cycle and soak method. Have you ever noticed water running off your lawn and onto sidewalks or the street? You may be watering incorrectly. North Texas clay soils have a hard time absorbing large amounts of water at once, so we recommend you use the cycle and soak method. This method delivers the right amount of water to your lawn over three cycles, helping you achieve a healthier lawn. The cycle and soak method has three easy steps. First, you must find the correct runtime for each sprinkler zone in your yard. The runtime is the time it takes for a zone to become saturated with water. Next, program your controller to run for three cycles. Ensure you have at least 60 minutes between start times and remember to follow the current time and day water restrictions for your area. Finally, observe your system as it runs and adjust your run times if you see water running off your lawn. All right, and from there it would direct us into the next section. The Cycle and Soak Worksheet helps you organize information so you can quickly and easily program the controller for your sprinkler system. Watch as I fill out a worksheet for my yard. First, I find the run times for each of the zones in my yard by manually running the sprinklers in each zone and timing how long it takes until I see water pooling in the grass or running onto sidewalks or driveways. Typically, spray heads run for 3 to 10 minutes and rotor heads run for 10 to 25 minutes. After finding each runtime, I add them up to find my total runtime. This time is important because it helps me find my cycle start times. The start time for cycle one should start early in the morning, say around 3 a.m. on your scheduled watering day. The start times for cycles two and three depend on the total runtime. If my total runtime is less than 60 minutes, then I add 60 minutes to the start time of the previous cycle. So cycle 2 would start at 4 a.m. and cycle 3 would start at 5 a.m. Always leave at least 60 minutes between each cycle. Now, what if my total runtime is more than 60 minutes? If this is the case, I need to make sure my cycles don't overlap, so I will add the total runtime plus an extra 15 to 20 minutes to the start time of the previous cycles. The extra time is flexible. In this case, if cycle 1 starts at 3 a.m., cycle 2 would start around 4.30 a.m., and cycle 3 would start around 6 a.m. And that's it! Now I will use my cycle and soak worksheet to program my sprinkler controller. To watch this again, click Replay, or click the highlighted areas to review. 
The cycle and soak method is easy once you get the hang of it. For some practice, click the forward arrow to practice cycle and soak watering. So the next section actually has a, an interactive uh, pretend irrigation controller that you practice setting. And you look at your pretend yard and see if there's runoff and create those cycle start times uh, based on your observations. Can you keep this lawn healthy and green? Follow the instructions to practice using the cycle and soak method. You may need a calculator or a pen and paper during this exercise. When you're ready to begin, click start. Let's find the runtime for zone one together. You can keep track of the time using the timer in the corner. First, choose a zone. Let's start with zone one. Click zone one. You can see the minutes up in the Once top you see corner. water pooling or running off the yard, click stop to turn off the sprinkler. As you can see, the runtime was added to the cycle and soak worksheet. Now repeat the steps for your remaining zones. If you need to start over, click restart. So for the sake of time, I'll stop there, but um, y'all will have the link to this so that you're welcome to play at your convenience and actually work through this cycle and soak exercise. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple more things and then get back to my PowerPoint. There is a glossary, so if a resident is confused by one of the terms that's used at any time, they can click on that glossary tab and say, oh, what is a rotor head? What's the difference between that and a spray head? Or what is uh, my start time? And so they can go through those if they need to. Uh, and then in a moment, I'll show you a little bit more about uh, resources that are available, which I personally think is the most valuable uh, part of this module is what it comes with as far as further learning. So uh, when you click the resources tab, you've got links to all kinds of things uh, from manufacturers websites for different uh, nozzles, for example, uh, as well as different controller types. But what I think is most valuable for the average homeowner are these two job aid documents. You've got a cycle and soak worksheet, which is a downloadable version of what we've just worked through in the module as well as sprinkler repair instructions for both spray and rotor heads. So I'm going to go over to those tabs. I've already opened them up here. Um, so when you click the sprinkler repair, it opens this page document, step-by-step -step instructions on how to identify and fix that particular problem. And these are all of the problems that you saw in the spot the problem tab of the module. But then the other resource that you could click on there was the cycle and soak web, or excuse me, worksheet, uh, which has the same instructions that she outlined in, in the module uh, audio. But then you've got a worksheet that you can take out to your yard and work through at your convenience and download as many copies as you need uh, should you make mistakes along the way. Uh, but there are also links to find licensed irrigation professionals. So there's a whole section on spotting advanced repairs, and we advise folks to call a licensed professional. But their next question would probably be, well, where do I find someone who can do this work? Um, so we advise them first to check through the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, which is the licensing agency in Texas for irrigation professionals as well as the Dallas Irrigation Association, which is a nonprofit organization uh, of licensed professionals in the Dallas-Fort Worth area uh, who are available to, to do work in various sections of our region. Uh, and then a series of other resources. We do partner heavily with Texas A&M AgriLife Water University. Uh, I can provide you links to their resources as well, which are, are very uh, excellent. Um, and they're an extension service through our Texas A&M University system. Uh, and then we also have several irrigation supply houses within the city of Plano, and we want to give folks directions to those locations. Um, this is not necessarily against the big box stores, but we do find that our irrigation supply stores actually have licensed professionals working as uh, sales associates. So that's the best place to go for the best customer service and knowledgeable customer service for our residents' needs. So I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. We'll wrap up.
Okay, I, I talked about those resources. So let's look at some metrics briefly. Uh, this is showing you our workshop attendance against our module users for the first year plus a few more months uh, that the module was in existence. So it's, uh, you started out relatively light, I believe uh, in its first month it had 84 users and then as word spread and also as uh, summer uh, conditions started, the module use started to increase. But you'll see in the summer months of uh, 2015 in May and June was when we offered some workshops and our attendance was absolutely under 100, um, even under 50. And so the module use just completely trumps our uh, in-person workshop uh, attendance. And that's not necessarily to say that workshops aren't valuable. There's only so much manpower that we have to teach those workshops. So uh, at the end of the day, we advise our residents to try both, uh, both the module and a workshop if they have questions or irrigation needs. Uh, but this is really to show you that it is accessible anytime, anywhere, and to everyone. So uh, that's what makes it so uh, much more heavy uh, use compared to our workshops. Okay. Uh, in order to spread the word about the module, but also just to get people thinking about Smart Irrigation Month and uh, Sprinkler Spruce Up, uh, we gave them the opportunity to take, use the module, take a brief survey on their experience, and be entered for an opportunity to win a utility credit or a new Smart Irrigation Controller. So these are just a couple of copies of some social media posts from our Live Green and Plano page about this program and uh, the surveys responses that the program yielded uh, helped us to define just how much people are learning from the module, which I'll show you. Uh, this is a, an ad for our Sprinkler Spruce Up series, so the in-person workshops that we offer on DIY irrigation. And the Quick Fixes for Beginners class actually shadows the module quite closely. We work through the module in the class uh, and help people to get familiar with it so that they can use it at home at their convenience. Um, those who attend all three parts of the Sprinkler Spruce Up series are also entered for a chance to win a $50 utility credit. And this past year, um, I added this Take Control of Your Controller class, uh, which focuses heavily on scheduling and the cycle and soak method. But I also took it a step further and uh, created a workbook for those classes that also mirrors uh, our module and takes some of those worksheets and puts them uh, into some more interactive formats for people to uh, write on as they're looking at their sprinkler problems. So as I mentioned, we, we did the survey through our Sprinkler Spruce Up Challenge and that allowed us to see just how useful the module is to its users. And you can see that before before taking the module, most folks said that they were admittedly beginners as far as irrigation knowledge goes, but uh, there's a tremendous increase in knowledge, especially into that intermediate zone uh, after taking the module. So this is a, a pretty substantial uh, increase in uh, the success of their learning. All right, uh, but along with their learning, we want to know that they also plan to do something with that knowledge that they've gained. So uh, we, sh we show here in the survey responses that uh, most of our attendees plan to assess their system for broken, clogged, or misaligned heads. And most of those folks also said that they plan to set their controller using the cycle and soak uh, method. They plan to fix broken, clogged, or misaligned heads. Some said they would install a rain and freeze sensor, which we offer a rebate for, by the way. And uh, also a smaller amount said that they would contact a licensed irrigation uh, professional. So uh, very early on, I said that one of our challenges is that set it and forget it mentality. So just by taking, taking the module, being a user, and um, telling us that they plan to assess their system or to assess their scheduling, that in itself is, is a huge increase um, and potential water savings because people are more engaged now. That controller, runoff, irrigation problems are now in their mind, hopefully regularly, so they're more willing and able to make those changes as appropriate to their controller and to their system. Uh, 
All right, so I did mention that uh, the irrigation module was the fifth one that we had developed. Uh, we do have several others available for you to explore. Our newest is the Green Building Challenge. So uh, where we teach our irrigation workshops and other workshops is actually a LEED Platinum Certified Environmental Education Center. Uh, we're very proud to have a facility like this in the city of Plano. And in fact, it was the first uh, LEED Platinum Certified facility in the city of Plano. So uh, not only is it a place to gather and a place to teach sustainability, but it is a teaching tool in itself. And so we have created a, a similar module that highlights those green attributes of this building. So we invite you to check that out while you're looking at the irrigation module as well. And finally, I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions or share more information about uh, this resource and others. So thank you for joining me today. Great, thank you, Katie. Um, I definitely have a couple questions, but Mark, could we launch a couple of our poll questions before we start? Yeah, sure. And uh, in fact, I've got these all in the same, uh, I've got them sort of wrapped up in the one poll. So I'll go ahead and launch that now and folks can, uh, can respond. Can we just take another 10 seconds with the poll? Alrighty. All right, Katie, I have a question for you. I'm wondering, there, there's a lot of folks on this webinar from Utah, and I'm wondering if this is something that, that's adaptable to other states and if they would be able to customize some of the resources um, while still giving you credit for, for originally developing the material. That's a great question. Happy if you want to put the link on your website uh, to link to our module, that's fantastic. Uh, other entities have done that as well. Um, so you can always link back to us. Uh, as far as updating the material for your use or for your geographic area, that I'd have to ask about that. I'm not sure what format the original files are in. Um, I know that one of the original versions of our module, uh, the makers actually had some illustrations that looked very desert-like, very uh, xeriscape-like. And in fact, that's not really what our region should look like. We're not a desert. Um, so I think that they could adapt the files based on um, needs. We really wanted the little house that's featured in the spot, the problem, to look like a Plano home. Um, so if you are interested in possibly adapting our files or, or using them as a template to create your own module, I'll certainly be happy to be a contact. Um, as I may have mentioned, this was developed just before my time, um, but those who did have a hand in developing it are still around, so I can always ask them. Great, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, we don't have any further questions in the Q&A box, uh, but I, I would like to thank you very much for that presentation, that was wonderful, and thank everyone so much for joining us on our first webinar, and, um, hopefully we'll see you, we'll see y'all next month. And any, do, do have we got any information on when the next, I, I wasn't uh, sure about our dates. So we got information on when the, the next one is? Ah, uh, great question. So it's every second Tuesday at two o'clock. Great. And I put a link in the chat box. If you add your email to that list, we'll keep you updated on the monthly webinars. Sounds wonderful. And again, uh, just a reminder, this is being recorded. Uh, if you got here via the learn event, uh, we'll update, uh, uh the link to the recording on that learn event. So feel free to rewatch or share that with any friends that were not able to join, join us. Okay. Th thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh,